Hi, this is Mary from Open Helix with this week's Tip of the Week. If you're seeing this tip someplace else, be sure to come back by our blog at blog.openhelix.com for additional details. I'll provide links to the resource I'm describing today, links to the publications associated with that, and more. So check us out at blog.openhelix.com. For today's tip, we're going to be focusing on GenoCAD. So GenoCAD is computer-assisted design software for synthetic biology. And it's an open source tool that's been around for a number of years now, and it's a terrific tool that will let you store genetic parts that you might want to use to create synthetic constructs. So the goal of GenoCAD is to have both an annotated database of genetic parts which you could use, but offer you the framework that you could add your own parts in as well. You can also create rules. So there are rules that will help you to design these constructs, a grammar. So you can have parts, the existing parts, or your own parts, and you can specify how those should be used in a construct. That's what step one will offer you here, um, designing the grammars and using the parts libraries. So let's just quickly go to step one to have a quick look at that. So when you first arrive, there are existing parts that are available for you to use. So I'll just, I'll just highlight this um, E. coli public one that's available. And if I choose to highlight that, you can see all of the different parts that are available for you to create uh, synthetic constructs. And any of these items comes with additional information. For example, if I was looking at this tetracycline resistance uh, protein, then I could learn more details about it in the description area here, including the sequence that's available. But as I said, in addition to the ones that are available here, you can create your own. So I've created a sample library here, and I created uh, my own library that has different features as well. So I can choose to use existing parts, or I can use my own parts, and I can use those in combination with a grammar. So this is a set of rules that will establish how the constructs should function. So there's a basic grammar here. I'll just click the basic grammar to give you an idea, where, where we can see that there's a 1, 2, or 3 cassette with a promoter, ribosome binding site, coding sequence, and terminator. And so every time I choose to use this basic grammar, those will be the parts that will be offered to me as in my design. We'll take a look at the design in a minute. But if you didn't want to use the ones that are provided for you here, you can add or import your own grammar. So you can use grammar that's been provided by somebody else, or you can create your own. So for example, I might want to create my own um, grammar using these um, BioBricks parts that are available here. And I could establish the rules that should be used for my synthetic constructs. I won't do that now. I'll just go back to the parts and use the existing parts that are available. But you should come back later and check that out. But once you have parts that you wanted to use and grammars that you wanted to use, you can then design. So you could start by choosing I'm going to choose, once again, the basic grammar and the E. coli existing public parts, but if you had your own, you could choose to use those. And as I mentioned to you in the grammar section, I could choose to design a one, two, or three cassette option here. And I will choose two cassettes just for this example, and now you can see I have the opportunity to design each one of these. So I'm going to click on this first cassette, and then I can choose which promoter, which ribosome binding site, which coding sequence, and which terminator to use. So in this case, I'll just choose a few examples here and I've designed the first part of that construct. I could then choose the next one, the second cassette. I can choose a whole different set of promoters, ribosome binding sites, coding sequences, and terminators as well. And when I've done this, I can then obtain my sequence information. So remember that sequence information that was carried from each of these components? I can then download this. It's available for me to use in other tools and to store that. I won't do that here, but that's available for you. So you can use parts that exist in the, in the system, or your own, and then you can take those and set the rules and design constructs that would use these parts. Another thing that you can do if you've chosen to simulate them, I have, I've chosen the no simulation one here, but if you had simulation rules as well, you could establish those in GenoCAD and then you could set up ways to run that and, sim and simulate the, the functions of these features that you've just added. Now, I'll, I'll just use the public designs as the example, but you could come back later and try that as well. So here's a case where this tetracycline resistance public design can be simulated. So if you click the simulate button here, you can then choose to, for example, say, I'll say 60 seconds, this should go with an interval time of 15, and um, I can run this simulation. So if I had parts that had simulation equations, then I could choose to um, run that and explore and see what that might look like. So that's just one quick example. You should come back and try this out later. But GenoCAD is a really flexible tool where you can take existing parts, you can create synthetic constructs, you can upload your own and design those, and then start simulating them as well. So this could be really helpful as we proceed with synthetic biology. Thanks so much for your time.